sisters and brothers, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary. Today is Monday of the first week in Ordinary Time. Our Mass Presider today is Reverend Father Ronnie Chrysostomo, SVD. Our celebration will now begin. Please rise. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, dear friends, to our Eucharistic celebration on this uh, first day of what we call now the Ordinary Time. We, as we begin this journey with the Lord in His public ministry, meditating precisely the, his, his work of proclaiming the good news, we ask the Lord, the, the gift of the Spirit, that we may have the disposition to follow Him faithfully and with openness. At the, at the beginning of this celebration, we ask God's mercy and pardon for the sins we have committed. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we, for have, we have sinned, sinned against, against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that we may see what must be done and gain strength to do what can be seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the first book of Samuel. There was a certain man from Ramathaim, Elkanah by name, a Zupit from a hill country of Ephraim. He was the son of Jeroham, son of Eluhu, son of Tuhu, son of Duke, an Ephraimite. He had two wives, one named Hannah and other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah was childless. This man regularly went on pilgrimage from his city to worship the Lord of hosts 
and to sacrifice him at Shiloh. For the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Penena, were ministering as priests of the Lord. When the day came for Elkanah to offer service, sac offer sacrifice, he used to give a por portion each to his wives, Penena, and to all her sons and daughters, but a doubled portion to Hannah because he loved her. Though the Lord had made her barren, her rival to upset her, turned it into a constant reproach to her that the Lord had left her barren. This went on the year after year. Each time they made their pilg pilgrimage to the sanctuary of the Lord, Penina would approach her, and Hannah would weep and refuse to eat. Her husband Elkanah used to ask her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you refuse to eat? Why do you grieve? Am I not more to you than ten sons? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. How shall I make a return to the Lord? For all the good he has done for me, the cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. We rise to honor the Holy Gospel. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the, good, the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they left their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat, along with their hired men 
and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed day to all of you, to all our fellow worshipers in other parts of the world. I would like to begin this uh, reflection with this note on our liturgical season that we are uh, starting today. The, uh, after uh, celebrating the mystery of Christ's coming in the flesh, and his manifestation as the savior of the world through these beautiful uh, seasons of Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany, whose end was yesterday's celebration of the baptism of the Lord, or also the beginning of this ordinary time, we start today the so-called ordinary time. Ordinary time is divided into two periods. One part is that which extends from the end of Christmas season until Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. And the second part of this is from the week after uh, Pentecost to the week before Advent. The ordinary time is the longest season in the uh, liturgical year, which is more or less 34 weeks. The term ordinary at times, or maybe misleading, and it sounds at times negative because we associate it with the something that is banal, common, predictable, stereotyped, overused, nothing spectacular, especially when you compare it with uh, uh, the special seasons that we have in the church, like, uh, or the, what they called in uh, Italian, the Tempi Forti, the strong seasons, the strong times, no? Of Advent, Christmas, or uh, Lent and Easter. But ordinary time should be understood by going back to its original Latin nuance, which comes from the word ordo, ordinal, meaning numbered, ordered. Since the main focus of this season is the public ministry of uh, Jesus, so the Sundays and weeks are numbered and ordered for our convenience. It would be better and it may be easier to, to organize them in this way because if we have to place every Sunday a name for it, like well, the Sunday of the calling of the apostles, the Sunday of the healing of the mute, etc. It would be cumbersome. So it was placed precisely with this, uh, ordering them by numbering them one, two, and so on. For our convenience, and again, as I've said, it is ordered. The meaning is ordered or numbered. This season invites us to journey with Christ in his ministry of proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. And like his disciples, his apostles, we learn at his feet and be transformed according to the mind of Christ. That is, the invitation of this season to journey with Christ, to journey and grow and be transformed by His 
this journey and this proclamation. In the Gospel today, if we have if we are at the moment of transition from Christmas epiphany to ordinary time, we also find here in the Gospel a transition in the life of Jesus. He left Nazareth, his town, and went to Galilee where he started to preach the Gospel. There is that short phrase at the beginning of the gospel that, that after the arrest of John the Baptist, he went to Galilee. The question is, what motivated this transfer, this transition of Jesus from uh, his native town to Galilee where he preached the gospel. Why did he not start there in his hometown, Nazareth? The reason, according to uh, biblical commentators, is precisely the arrest of John the Baptist. It was, according to commentators, it was a sobering moment for him. And Jesus must have seen his faith in John's faith. Meaning, John, following the prophetic tradition of old, ended in tragedy. Jesus must have seen also his own tragic end. Since his own option and lifestyle are of that same prophetic tradition. As we know, many of the Old Testament prophets were persecuted and were martyred. So if, as if the, the, the message is, if you follow this way, then expect also persecution and tragic end. Was Jesus discouraged, afraid? No. We see here his movement from his place of birth to Galilee where he started with passion to proclaim the good news. There is an important lesson, I think, that uh, Jesus is trying to show us here, especially his attitude. When the situation was not propitious, he did not stop there. He was not cowed nor paralyzed. He moved to another more hospitable place, willing to receive his message. And we would have this insight later on when Jesus would return to his native place and many did not believe in him. As he would later teach his apostles also in their missionary journey, if they do not accept you in one place, then go to another and proclaim the good news there. The difficulties and failures in one situation or moment of one's life should not be considered as the end of everything. These, in fact, are invitations to move on and to try anew, as Jesus did. Every, let every moment good or bad, be an opportunity for learning. Besides, I think too precious is the message of and gift of God's kingdom and good news 
if we are easily discouraged and silenced by threats, difficulties, and failures. The nearness of the kingdom should motivate us to be courageous and enthusiastic like Jesus in starting a new even in the face of discouragements and threats. Also, our courage is based on the fact that God, or Jesus, is the author is the, of His work. This is God's work and not our work in the first place. So this should assure us also that if it is God's work, we are sure that He will make it prosper. May our journey with Christ in this season of what we call ordinary time, our journey with Jesus who proclaimed the good news, enable us also to be open to He, to be formed according to His will, according to his mind. Amen. As a chosen people by God, let us present before our Father the needs of all people. For every prayer, let our response be, God who calls, bless our lives. God who calls, bless our lives. That our pastors, called by God to be a fishers of men, may face the challenge of renewal by preaching the gospel. We pray, God, God who, who calls, calls, bless our lives. That missionaries may become effective proclaimers of the gospel by witness by their witness of life. We pray, God, God who, who calls, calls, bless, bless our, our lives. That those called by our Lord. To his service may respond generously to his call. We pray, God, God who, who calls, calls bless, bless our lives. That the Lord may touch the sick, the sorrowing, the troubled, and those who suffer in mind and body. We pray, God, God who, who calls, calls bless, bless our lives. For the medical experts, scientists, and researchers, that they may be able to continue to develop more effective and affordable vaccines for everyone as soon as possible so that everyone may be protected against con contracting the virus while those already infected will be healed and there will be no, no more further transmission. We pray, God, God who, who calls, calls bless, bless our, our lives, lives, that our beloved dead may live, may live in the Lord's peace. We pray. God, God who, who calls, calls bless, bless our lives. And we pray also for our other and personal intentions. We pray. God who calls, bless our lives. Lord God, make us fit to carry out any task you wish us to do by the strength of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray. May it restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father creator of the world and source of all life for you never forsake the works of your wisdom but by your providence are even now at work in our midst with mighty hand and outstretched arm you led your people israel through the desert now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world you always accompany her by the power of the holy spirit and lead her along the paths of life of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through christ our lord and so with the angels and, and saints we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, 
gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor and the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Onesto our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, especially those we remember in this Mass and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With confidence, we now pray to our Heavenly Father, asking His help, His guidance, as we journey with His Son, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, thy will be done on, on earth as it is, as it is in, heaven. in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer to each other Christ's peace. Peace be with you. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under, my, under my roof, but only, but say, only the say, word, say the word, and, and my soul shall. shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. act of spiritual communion my jesus i believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament i love you above all things and i desire to receive you into my soul since i cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly, says the Lord. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, 
we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray, pray that, that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body. Strength in their commitment, commitment protection, protection from a disease. We pray for those afflicted. May, may they be restored, restored to health. Protect, protect those who care for them. them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give, give us the grace in these trying times, times to work for, for the good, good of all and, and to help those in need. May our concern, concern and compassion for each for other see us through, us through this crisis. This crisis and lead, and lead us, us to conversion, to conversion and, holiness. and holiness. Grant and all this to our, to our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ your, your Son, who lives, who lives and, reigns and reigns with you in the unity, in the unity of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. God, God forever, forever and ever. And Amen. We, we fly to your protection, protection O Holy, Holy Mother, Mother of God. God. Do, Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saints Arnold Jansen and Joseph Freinadovitz, pray for us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, your loved ones, your work and activities, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.